Twelve on public education, the meeting is called to order. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of the public bodies in which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with this provision of this act, the business administrator, or acceptance, has close notice of this meeting to be published by having the date and time in place, therefore, close on the bulletin board or the municipal building communicate to the Baltimore press and file with the borough of the clerk of the borough of Baltimore. Roll call. Mr. Lovino? Here. Mr. Doyle? Here. Ms. Goff? Mr. Palouse? Here. Mr. Reicher? Here. Ms. Sanford? Here. Ms. Caraglia? Here. Mr. Turco? Here. Mr. Here. Please join me for the In school, Mrs. C. Geronimo has been 
was very busy with many new activities. During freshman orientation, she introduced incoming students to the library and gave them all an application for a library card. In conjunction with the National Library Card sign up month in September, she has a handful of public librarians to visit the high school towards the end of the month to distribute the cards to our students in the cafeteria during lunch. The Trenches College application in full force and C. Geronimo has graciously offered to meet with all senior English classes to guide them in their revision of their college application essays and to expand the influences of the resources in the Media Center with Tuesdays with teachers in the library. Each Tuesday morning at 7.30 a.m., she meets with teachers for many workshops focused on school technology. Furthermore, Auburn High School students are displaying their innovative side with the Naked Space this September. Projects including using virtual, virtual reality goggles and painting abstracts with acrylic film paint are only, been, or are only the beginning of what I know will be Auburn High School's most creative year yet. This year's Gold Pep Rally highlighted students' school pride and was accompanied with a vocal performance from Student Council President Jacqueline Hansen. And as always, a very happy performance for our cheerleader, Go Bear. To kickstart the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the girls soccer team is selling shirts as a fundraiser. The shirts are $10 and all proceeds go towards supporting patients suffering from breast cancer. Once again, Hawthorne High School shows its dedication by coming to the center to support an important club. That is all for September's report. I will look forward to working with you more throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next for our superintendent's report, Mr. Spree. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to welcome Elizabeth. I uh, always enjoy having our student rep with us at our board meetings to share all the great things going on at Northern High School. So, I'm um, looking forward to hearing great things, all the great things happening at the high school. Um, so, before I get to my report and, and welcoming our new staff, I'd like to introduce uh, Kathy Helma on that first start. So, many of you know that last year uh, the board engaged uh, in the strategic planning process three-year strategic planning process, um, and uh, we've completed that process, and Kathy is here from New Jersey School Boards to present uh, the results. Uh, we did receive copies of the strategic plan, which was shared with the board, um, but at this point I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Kathy to share, share what, what, what uh, our strategic plan. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate the opportunity to come back to Waterloo help roll out the strategic plan which was arrived at by a wonderful process um, as the superintendent Scarito mentioned the board had been talking about it for quite some time and decided that um, really the best plan for Hawthorne would be arrived upon only with great input from the community from the stakeholders so that's what they asked me to do and I was very pleased to do it over three meeting sessions and to come up with what's going to be the district's roadmap for the future. And everyone here made such a, came after this, made such a meaningful contribution. It really was a pleasure, and I'm very pleased to come back and tell you a little bit more about um, We can advance, these, these are, um, you know, uh, just a snapshot of who participated. Of course, we have the full support of the board and administration. But also, um, on the right on the uh, right side of the screen, we couldn't have done this without all the parents, without all the staff and administration who came out, who so carefully um, brought their wisdom to the process and their viewpoints. Community members from all different, uh, all different stakeholder areas in Hawthorne came out. Board members also took more time away from their families to participate in the process. And we even had a student who participated, and everyone gave so generously of their time. And uh, to very good reasons. So I'm pleased to, to revisit this. And this graphic looks very familiar to anyone who was involved with in the process because this really shows you um, what strategic planning is all about. Uh, it starts with a baseline of commitment. We had the commitment from the board. The board handed the reins over to the stakeholders and they responded in kind. We have three meetings to do these programs, and just to give you a little uh, view from my uh, from my perspective, uh, the board had it set up so that anyone could come to any of the meetings. One meeting, two meetings, all three, mix and match, what have you. We had consistently high turnout throughout all three meetings. Uh, for me personally, who facilitates a lot of these, I found that very impressive. What also I liked about it was the energy that was in the room. It was very evident. Everyone was on board. They were both feet in and it was quite rewarding. Um, but in order to take all that commitment and steer it 
forward to make a good plan, we needed information, right? Everyone needs the same set of data to go from. And Superintendent Scorino put together a very comprehensive PowerPoint presentation that was called the State of the District, which laid out just about anything that someone who would be walking in from the street needed to know about the Public Schools. Uh, it was very data heavy, but it also, as you could go through this, you could see where your values were. That's where it started. And then what we did on that first meeting after the State of the District presentation is everybody broke into small groups and started to discuss the strengths and the challenges that they saw for Fourth Warren schools. It was a very rich process and it was there was a lot of great thoughts going on back and forth that people in their small groups were able to share with stakeholders from a different stakeholder. We have parents talking with administrators, talking with law enforcement, talking with all sorts of different ways of looking at the school system. And then at the end of the evening, we reported those results out. We used the same sort of format for our second meeting, which happened in February, where we discussed the vision for the district. And everyone went into different randomly assigned groups and discussed where they saw Hawthorne schools in, let's say, the next five years. We'll talk a little bit more about that in my presentation tonight. And from that work, from those two meetings, we met a third time in March, and we were able to take all of the results that came out from that and see three evident goal areas that were unique to Hawthorne. And from those three goal areas, the people who showed up for the March meeting were able to self-select which goal area was closest to their heart and work with others who were of like-minded, and similar interest, and to come up with a goal statement written right here by the small groups that's unique to Hawthorne, and then objectives that would support that goal statement and help administration to go forward with the strategic plan that was ultimately written. It all came out of here. It was all from you. Um, and from there, we're at the top of the pyramid. That's why I'm here tonight. This is, this is ready for the board to accept it for Superintendent Sparito to write the action plan. Once you've told him the direction that you want the district to go in, Board agrees to it, then it's his job to get you there. And that's what that top triangle is, the action And this guided us throughout the process your mission statement. Um, I'm sure you're probably familiar with it. I know the board is. Um, this was kind of our, our lighthouse. We had it on all of our agendas. We began each session with it. It's a very um, it's a very bright guide. So meeting one, strengths and challenges, where we got everybody into it. Here are some of the things that, that came out of that. Um, the website for Hawthorne Public Schools was always updated after these meetings. The notes went up with all of that work. But here are some of the things when I'm trying to put it all on one side that really stood out to me. Um, and like I said, I do facilitate other strategic plans, and they're all different, and there are some similarities. But these really helped me to get to know Hawthorne. Um, and here are some of the things that kept coming up. Um, your strengths, here they were really, it's a real positive document. Um, your staff, your teachers know your students. Um, parent and community involvement. Safety and security, really, um, uh, it became very evident how important that was as we went through the process and just how, um, how well you're doing on that. Technology, um, your curriculum was identified as a strong an emphasis on mental health and student wellness and the whole, you know, the whole person, not just, you know, the academic experience of the child. That was listed as a strength. The bear cave, the school Rito went through that, it's been, and, and uh, it was nice for Nina and my uh, colleague Matt to come and learn about that. That absolutely resonates with your stakeholders. Um, and I like that, if you can't read that last bullet point, I probably should put it, it's a great one. There's a forward vision here in Hawthorne that comes from the top. Beautiful, right? But of course there's challenges for just about every strength. Um, some of these are not unique to you and you are not the cause of them. We start with the first one, taxes and state aid, always a concern. You have a growing population and you have to prepare for all different sorts of kids for the future. And you have to look at their social skills and help them transition. Transition is difficult for any student. Your eyes are on. Um, student retention to make sure they stay in the Hawthorne public school system so you can continue to serve them. And 
and more course offerings are always something that, that, uh, that you like to see. Balancing population across the schools is another one. And also, you notice parental involvement was a strength, but diversity of parental involvement is on the wish list. You know, to have different parents come out and, and contribute to this. I'm seeing some nods, and I absolutely get it. That's what's, you know, that's pretty evident from everybody who serves on the when we went to the visioning club. After all that strength and challenges, the next meeting was really fun. Because what we did is we imagined that Baltimore Public Schools were on the cover of Time Magazine as an example for the nation of a 21st century success. And so what we did for the participants, we turned it back to them and said, how did you get there? Hypothetically, they title the article that's inside of this magazine and write it. Tell us how Hawthorne Public Schools would become a nationwide model for 21st century success if there were no strictures in it. If we didn't have to worry about test scores, if state aid wasn't always an issue, if we didn't live in New Jersey with that 2% tax cap and the heavy work that it places on And the creativity was really flying. It took absolute wonderful flight, glorious flight, and here are some of the article titles that we have. Just to give you a feeling for what we were uh, talking about, um, to infinity and beyond, it's not just academics with exclamation point. Um, old school values with new technology. Um, that's pretty illuminating. Um, Auburn Public Schools creating multiple pathways to success and building 21st century learners and beyond, keeping the momentum going. So those were kind of almost mission statements for all the visioning work that came out of those groups, and that was a fun one. And then from there, we were able to, oh, in fact, yeah, I'm sorry, you're just perfect. You can go back to that circle, yeah. Here are some of the um, visions that actually came from those articles. Um, individualized experiences, community partnerships, that's on the list. Social and emotional learning embedded in the school culture, not just for the school to see, but also for the um, and a continued focus. I like that word, continue. Continued focus on student wellness and preparing students for real life challenges and situations. Those of us who were here probably remember that was a particular conversation. There was an awful lot of work about that. But, you know, how to arm our students for everything that they're going to be facing outside of the school. Um, on the wish list, virtual academics and homework health, vocational curriculum, and increased world languages. These are just some of the highlights. If you read the recaps on the website, they are still up there. You'll see even more of these great ideas. And from all of this work, we were able to identify three goal areas that are unique to Hawthorne. These form the backbone of our strategic plan. 21st century and life skills, student health and wellness, and teaching and from there, we started right what would be Quadmore's strategic plan. It was, um, it was a great deal. Um, and these are, this is the work of this whole which came out. I will read them to you because they are worthy of reading and they are worthy of uh, really absorption because these are very important statements. So your goal for 21st century and life skills is for the school district to academically, socially, and emotionally prepare students for a successful future as active contributing members of their community. That's the destination. That's where we want to get with this whole area. The objectives are like the stars on the compass. Once you know you're under there, you know if you're under a particular star, you know you're getting closer. These are the, the rungs on the ladder. So increase awareness of career options, including college, vocational, and military is your first objective. To provide students with the skills to enhance self-esteem, to build healthy relationships, and to work through conflict to reap positive outcomes. Second objective. Number three, to integrate the effective use of relevant technologies and digital citizenship to achieve short and long-term goals. And lastly, to develop pathways for student choice, self-guided learning, 
and increase the option two opportunities to better individualize instruction. So our first goal. Second, teaching and learning. Of course, curriculum should show up in these strategic plans, and it absolutely did. Um, and so our goal statement here is to provide a comprehensive and rigorous learning experience that best prepares students for future success as lifelong leaders. Our objectives to get us there. To so improve and provide ongoing meaningful professional learning opportunities that are relevant to staff and student needs. To create learning opportunities that promote individualized educational experiences by incorporating student input to identify and assess all students' individual needs for adequate and appropriate interventions. And fourthly, to continuously integrate innovative technology to enhance teaching and learning. And our third goal area, student health and wellness, was summed up in the following goal statement, to cultivate a positive and supportive culture so the students can, can continue to learn and grow. How are we going to get there? Well, to increase staff awareness of student mental health strategies, i.e. to create stronger relationships. Also to explore alternative educational opportunities throughout the grades, to expand support staff, and to coach students about coping skills. And that includes success and failure, um, and problem solving, conflict resolutions, and to prepare students to communicate those are the objectives of your work, that particular goal. And you probably noticed, as I was reading these and as you were reading, there are certain values that kind of went through all of these, right? I mean, you guys are, are very, you have your eyes on technology, but not technology as an in and of itself, how it's going to serve your students, right? How are you going to get your staff to get the most out of it? I thought that was, and wellness was all throughout that too. I thought that was very impressive. And you should be, um, and so the next step is, as we see on the side here, it's the work of administration. The board can probably expect to see a chart like this, um, where the goal statement will be on the top. The object for each objective, you'll see something like this. Um, and your superintendent will list the activities that you'll be using to fulfill those, that objective, to help fulfill that goal. What staff you will use to help accomplish that? What resources you'll need, and what the timeline is. What would be an indicator that that is working or needs adjustment? And now you have a strategic plan out of three 90-minute meetings and the commitment of everyone who is involved, which is really substantial and just a joy for me to work on. And I thought that this quote was a really good one um, to sum up the work that you did. And that's, you know, in, and I must say, not to be corny, but sometimes we feel a little powerless, especially when we read the news and we hear about, well, especially in education, there's just so many things coming at us so quickly. But to never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, concerned citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever happens. That's what Margaret Mead said, and it was my pleasure to meet that group of thoughtful, concerned citizens here in Hawthorne. And, um, and to help you, you know, get the backbone of a plan that was going to move the kids of this district forward for their time here and beyond. So thank you very much. Uh, I want to take a quick moment and uh, thank Kathy Pellworth and the other dog, Matt Lee, who came in. Here for these two minutes. It was uh, it was an interesting exercise. And, uh, it was enjoyable, and uh, it gave us a, a real good idea of how to go about being able to do besides the uh, single kind of action plans. So thank you so much. Yeah, I, would, I would echo those uh, that sentiment. Um, you know, I was very insightful as the superintendent of schools to, to really get up the, the input that we received, not just from the board, not just from staff, but from the community as well. So I thought it was a great exercise. I enjoyed it. Um, I can say that the administration and I have already begun uh, developing that action plan in that exact format that you saw on that, on that page there. So um, 
Uh, we expect to have something to share with the board soon, and then obviously we'll share that out uh, with the community as well once that's complete. So thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. A uh, few other things uh, that I want to mention, and then uh, we'll introduce all of our new staff members who are able to be with us tonight. Um, just want to start with some, some comments. Uh, just that the, you know, the school year is off to a great start. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of time into preparing for a new school year. Um, it goes unnoticed very often because people don't know what happens over the summer. Uh, but I, you know, I have to thank our maintenance and custodial staff for all that they do in our schools throughout the summer. They put in a lot of time, a lot of effort to make sure the schools are ready for students uh, arriving. I want to thank our administrators, our administrative assistants, and of course our teachers for preparing their classrooms um, and uh, you know, again, getting, getting those environments ready for students when they arrive. Um, I have to thank Scott Chamberlain, uh, our, our supervisor of Buildings and Grounds, uh, for all of his work this summer. As the board is aware, we have many, many summer projects going on this summer. Uh, everything from painting at the middle school and here at the high school. Uh, we had boilers being installed in Washington. Uh, we had our Epson projectors being installed throughout the district and our whiteboards. Uh, our STEM lab at the middle school, our beautiful new STEM lab at the middle school, I look forward to showing them off in the, in the months ahead. Um, and of course, our track here at Northland High School. Um, and as always, Mr. Chamberlain does such a good job of overseeing it all. Um, he puts in countless hours to make sure everything's done and done well. So I want to thank him uh, for everything that he does for us, not just in the summer, but throughout the year. Uh, just a couple of updates on a couple of those projects. Um, uh, the painting is obviously complete. The boilers are just about complete. Um, our STEM lab is complete. I actually took some pictures of students in there today who are enjoying themselves in that, in that room today. And I'll be sharing those uh, both on our website and through Twitter, as I always do. Uh, but the STEM lab is fantastic. The kids are absolutely loving that environment. So I'm really excited about that course and where that's going to go. And the track. Goodness, uh, as of to this morning, I spoke with the, uh, the site manager and he told us that today he would be completing his part of the work. Uh, the last stage is just the lining of the track, the actual lines that go on the track, which is a different company. It's subcontracted out to a different company and they are scheduled to come next week. So the track itself is done. Um, and like I said, the, the lines should be on there by next week. Again, depending you know, on the weather, the weather was a challenge, obviously. Um, you know, and, and for those in the community, uh, I'll just share that, you know, uh, there are a lot of questions about why it took so long. It, the challenge for us is that with a project like that, it's all about weather. And it can't work in the rain. So anytime it rains, even a little bit, that day is basically, uh, you know, a wash. Uh, can't, can't do anything. So fortunately, we've had some decent weather over the weekend. They worked all weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, they were here this morning. Uh, everything that's down there is supposed to be scheduled to be picked up tomorrow while we'll throw what's left over. Scheduled to be picked up tomorrow, and then we just await the gentleman to come and line the track, and we'll do set to go. It looks fantastic. Um, also, on September 4th, we had a very, very productive professional development day, and I want to commend uh, Mrs. Trebona for organizing all of our PD sessions for our staff throughout the district. It's a very, very big job. Of course, it's an outstanding job, especially for the first time. Um, also, over the next couple of weeks, our back to school nights will be taking place at all of our schools, and obviously, I encourage all of our parents to attend those back to school nights. Um, the schedule is available on our website, but just uh, for the sake of uh, reiterating, uh, reiterating the schedule, uh, this week is Washington School and Northern High School. Tomorrow is Washington, and Thursday, Northern High School. Next week, Monday is Lincoln School, Wednesday Jefferson School, and Thursday Roosevelt School. So in the next couple of weeks, all of our school nights will be complete. I will also share that the Bear Cave, as they did last year, they are going to host a back to school night probably in October. Um, and what they will be doing, as they talked about, obviously they'll be inviting the parents of the students who are currently in the program. But one of the things we talked about was inviting the parents of our senior students who may be attending in the future. So. We're looking at a date for that. Uh, we're looking at possibly, uh, probably in October for that you know, to uh, happen. And I will also share with the Bear Cave, I did have a chance to visit the Bear Cave last end of last week. Uh, kids were off to a great start. I, I have to tell you, I am so impressed. We 
with the growth of those students. I, at the time, we went and visited. We sat for about 30 minutes and just chatted. Uh, it was great. We had a great conversation. Um, heard some new jokes that I haven't heard, uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And they are hosting uh, their first uh, Barricade Cafe on Friday, September 28th. Um, I did share the invite with the door. Um, and uh, I know, I can tell you, the 1230 seats are already full. I just like to get in. <laughs> so they'll be hosting, as you know, every month. So I'll make sure I share those with you in the months ahead if you can't get, get there this month. All right? Okay. So with all that said, um, I would now like to take a moment. I always enjoy this. Um, just having the opportunity to introduce the many new staff members that are, have joined us this year. Uh, we did have 21 new staff members that couldn't all be here tonight. So uh, I'm going to introduce those who are here, but I also just want to read the names of those who are not here with us. Um, just, just to uh, you know, recognize them. So we have uh, some new people who are unable to be here, unfortunately. A new special ed teacher in Lincoln Middle School, Melissa Cahill. Uh, an attorney leaf, social studies teacher at Northwood High School, Megan Harris. Uh, our new behaviorist, Dana Janitz. Uh, a new special ed teacher at Jefferson School, our, our multiple disabilities class, is Grace Kenny. Uh, a special ed teacher here at Northwood High School, Daria Trelarchuk. Uh, Jacqueline Monero is our, one of our new language arts teachers at Lincoln Middle School. Uh, Irene Moroshnik, a new occupational therapist here in the district and a, uh, another leave replacement special ed teacher here at Northern High School, Nicholas Schiff. Um, again, unfortunately, they couldn't be here with us, but for those who were able to be here, I'm just going to ask you to stand up, please, my I your name, so we can uh, put the name of the face. So first uh, is one of our leave replacements, a special ed teacher at Rose Club School, Amanda Ackerman. Amanda, welcome. Thank you. Um, our new music teacher at Jefferson and Washington School, Kristen Balsam. Uh, not really new, uh, but someone who is uh, serving again as a lead replacement at Washington School, grade three teacher, Leslie Wrestling. Leslie, welcome back. <laughs> new, welcome back. Okay. Leslie was with us last year as, as a, a, a lead replacement in that same position, so we're happy to have Leslie back. She did a wonderful job last year. Um, our new math teacher uh, here at Northern High School, Brianna Cruz. Brianna, welcome. Uh, new English teacher, and again, not really new to the district, worked here as a power with us, but a new English teacher at Northern High School, Stephen Francis. <laughs> Our new fifth grade teacher at Washington School, Casey Dubuque. Casey, you know, there's a cheering section. You know what had to be with me, so Our new social studies teacher at Lincoln Middle School, David Coons. Welcome, Dave. Dave also coaches here at the high school. He's one of our football coaches here at the high school. Uh, our new art teacher at Lincoln Middle School, Melissa Acasio. Uh, our part-time BSI teacher at Roosevelt, Chelsea Perone. Chelsea, welcome. Uh, another leave replacement, special ed teacher at Lincoln Middle School, Wendy Post. A new full-time English teacher at Northern High School, Christina Ridmersky. Christina, welcome. Uh, our new language arts and BSI teacher at Lincoln Middle School, Erica Ring. Hi. Erica, Hi. welcome. And our new part-time elementary Spanish teacher, Nicole Tenkin. Nicole, welcome. So those are our new staff members here in the district. And again, I appreciate you being here. Uh, they put a lot of time in uh, already. I can tell you they spent a few days here this summer meeting with uh, Mr. Rona and Mr. Brislin to get themselves uh, acclimated. Um, did a lot of work over those two days. Uh, but again, we, we welcome you all to Hawthorne. Appreciate you being here tonight and uh, wish you nothing but the best uh, this year and into the future. Right, so, welcome. Um, I just want to say a little something. Uh, I want to extend a warm, enthusiastic welcome to everybody. To our new staff. Uh, we're really excited about the direction that the district's going and we're happy that you guys have joined us. Um, you should remember, parents have entrusted you with their most precious commodity, the children. And I believe they're in great hands. Um, also, a quote that I'd like to share with you, 
every student remembers their own, <clears throat> every student who remembers their own education remembers the teachers, not the methods or the techniques. Teachers are the heart of the educational system. Never underestimate the power of making a connection with your students. It will be our future. So on behalf of the Board of Education, I welcome you and I thank you. We're going to take a 10 minute recess. Uh, there's some refreshments in the back, so if anyone wants to take advantage of them, uh, please do. Come back there. Right? Changing is now going to be called the Student Safety Data System, but basically we're required to report information twice a year. Uh, in the fall, we report information from January through June of last year, and in the spring, we report the information from September to December of this year. So there's two reporting periods. So this is from the end of last year, and just I gave you a, a four-year comparison just to see how things shake out in regard to um, this report. And under each heading, there are many different areas that, just to give you an idea, so if you're looking at um, uh, vandalism, it's not just damage to property, it's theft, it's uh, false public alarm, arson, those kinds of things. Under violence, it's anything from a fight to a robbery to an assault to a threat. So there's numerous, under each category, there's numerous subcategories, um, but just so you see the numbers there, Share, um, we're down, you can see our incidents, total number of incidents are down. Um, and finally, the last column, uh, the HIV, it's only the confirmed HIV, the ones that were deemed HIV for the second half of the year. It's not the only one of the ones that were deemed. That's why it says HIV confirmed. Okay? Uh, just so you have that information. Um, you know, other than that, like I said, it's, uh, we've had, knock on wood, Jason, but we've had a pretty good start to the year. Excited about a lot of exciting things going on. We're still going to have some of the new programs, uh, the new AP uh, computer science class here at high school. A lot, a lot of good things on the horizon. The Baker Space, which was mentioned already, uh, a lot of great things. Uh, I can tell you our PTO is going to be donating some robots to our uh, robotics class here at the high school. So, a lot of, a lot of positive momentum right now. Looking forward to things going on. All right, so that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schreiber. Negotiations, Mr. Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Pursuant to the recommendation of the Superintendent of the Schools, the Committee on Negotiations recommends the following resolution. N1 on page 3, whereas the Hoffman Board of Education here referred to as the Board and the Hoffman Teachers Association here referred to as the HTA have negotiated a successor collective negotiations agreement here referred to as CNA for 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020, and 2020. School years, and whereas the HDA has by a majority vote of its membership ratified the CNA. Now, therefore, be resolved that the board hereby ratifies and approves the terms of the CNA for 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020, 2020, and 2021 school years. And be further resolved that the board hereby authorizes the board president, the business administrator, and the board secretary to execute on behalf of the board the CNA by the Before we go to discussion, I just want to make a statement. Um, the item that we're going to be voting on on the agenda is a consideration by the board is the, uh, for a successful agreement of the Baltimore Teachers Association for the next three school years. I had the privilege of serving on the board's negotiating committee with Mr. Blues, Mr. Taragula, and Mr. Kumi. I want to begin by expressing my gratitude to them. Mrs. Spirito and Ms. Engel for the many hours they contributed to the success of these negotiations. Before we discuss the proposed three-year agreement, I would like to outline for the public, uh, for the, public uh, the essential terms of the new contract. 
salaries. The board agrees to increase salaries by 3%, 2.9%, and 2.9% in each of the three years of the agreement. These percentages are in line with other Passaic County School District settlements and will allow for equitable distribution on the salary guide for all teachers and paraprofessionals. The board also agrees to recognize the specialized skills of the paraprofessionals who work with children diagnosed with autism with a salary differential funded by the overall settlement. The board also agrees to increase their athletic and extracurricular activities in year one by 2.25%. The board also negotiated the change in the teacher's longevity entitlement so that the eligibility begins after 14.9 years rather than 10.9 years. Health insurance. This is a significant issue for the board and the association. The board sought to change the plan platform from Direct 10, which is the most expensive plan, to Direct 15 is more manageable, is less expensive, and will result in a savings for almost $200,000 a year, with approximately $130,000 saved uh, during the remainder of this school. This savings is significantly reduced by the cost of the settlement in year one of the agreement. The board also permanently changed the reimbursement, or opt-out, for the employees who waived health insurance to 25% or $5,000 which is less, whichever is less. The prior contract had a previous requirement of a 30% opt-out. If the board changed the insurance calendars, this will vastly improve the board's ability to market its health insurance plan in the future in an effort to achieve lower premiums. In consideration for these significant health insurance savings, the board agrees to reduce the employees' Chapter 78 contributions to 95% of the employees' annual contribution. Since this is the first time the board is reducing uh, the employee's contribution, and without knowing what increase in the health insurance may be imposed upon the expiration of this contract, the board included a sunset provision so that this reduction in the employee's premium contribution will not automatically continue into the next contract unless the association successfully negotiates it. its continuation. The new contract clarifies that employees work here entitlement to an agreement with the restrictions on the type of graduate, graduate courses that may be reimbursed. The new cap of $15,000 on payment of accumulated sick leave upon retirement and restrictions on the use of personal leave to extend the school holiday or recess period. Overall, the Board and Association accomplished several of their priorities, particularly in the area of health insurance which is significant cost to the board and the employees. The board has successfully changed the employee's health insurance platform to be a more managed health care plan and will continue to provide our employees with a comprehensive plan at the substantial savings for the board and the employees. In closing, I want to all acknowledge the efforts of the Hawthorne Teachers Association and its representatives who are always professional and made the effort to find solutions to our, uh, our respective this three-year contract reflects those priorities. Thank you. I'll open up the floor to discussion. You know what? Oh, I just want to piggyback on uh, the Sierra's comments that thank the HDA for their goodwill disposition that uh, was brought to the negotiating table. I see what's going on over here, so thank you for that. Also, I'd like to. Um, Thank the committee, specifically uh, our senior member, Mr. Taraglia. He's uh, brings us a wealth of experience to the table, and this was his last negotiations. Uh, so I just want to acknowledge him and thank him for uh, everything that he's done for the committee. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Ms. Scott? Mr. Palouse? Yes. Mr. Reichert? Ms. Sanford? Yes. Mr. Traglia? Yes. Mr. Povijo? Yes. Mr. Sciano? Yes. Curriculum instructions, uh, pitching for Ms. Ms. Goff and Mr. Wright. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll pursue to the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools that the Virginia curriculum instruction.
recommends the following resolutions, starting on page 4, CI2 through CI5, on page 5, CI6 through CI13, on page 6, CI14 through CI22. On behalf of the committee, I support. Discussion? I just have a question. I think I know the answer about the CI-18. Sir. We have the contract with the Northern County Special Services. Yeah, that's our last outsourced team. We, we hired one team. Okay. We used to have more than one outsourced, but now we have one last outsourced team. Okay. Um, something we will obviously look at possibly bringing in the house and get the Okay, that's what I was going to say. Is it because we can't find one more? Yeah, it was, it was a matter of finding someone for this one.
discussion? I have some. Uh, and I want to apologize to Mr. But I found this uh, late today. Uh, and I had a question about 847. In regards to where it says approval to do a contract for the medical exam. It's the school physician. Because when I looked up medical exam, you know, just it, it says it's going to be different. And that was a big why. I want to make sure it's the school physician that is in fact. Anybody else? Roll call, please. Mr. Reicher? Yes. Ms. Sanford? Yes. Ms. Caraglia? Yes. Mr. Turco? Yes. Mr. Pulido? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Ms. Scott? Mr. Palouse? Yes. Mr. Scarra? Yes. My name is Mr. Turco. Approval of September 2018 bill list. I make a motion for the board to approve the bill list for the moment. September 2018. Discussion, anybody? Roll call. Mr. Sanford? Yes. Mr. Trangia? Yes. Mr. Turco? Yes. Mr. Pavino? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Ms. Gow? Mr. Blues? Yes. Mr. Reicher? Yes. Mr. Gow? I will, uh, yeah, yes, we're prejudiced. We're vented 2875 and 2892. And I will abstain from vented number 3996. Yes, I'm aware. Billion grams, Mr. Doyle. Thank you, Mr. President. Pursuant to the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Committee on Billions and Grounds recommends the following resolutions. Page 11, EG 49, EG 50, EG 12, EG 51, EG 52. We have the committee. So, second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Turco? Yes, with prejudice on PG 50 and 51. Yes, I'm not. Mr. Galito? Yes. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Ms. Goff? Mr. Blues? Yes. Mr. Reicher? Yes. Ms. Sanford? Yes. Mrs. Garrett? Uh, yes, with prejudice on PG 50 and 51. Yes, I'm all. Uh, 
be able to finance the administration. The committee did not meet. At this point, we're waiting on the audit to be completed. Council Liaison to Cintarac Memorial Board. Thank you very much. Curriculum Instruction and Policy, Mr. Uh, yeah, the Curriculum Instruction Committee met on 9 11, and here are some of the different things that were discussed. It was nice to see on the um, presentation from the school board tonight that technology is a positive uh, in the district. So we got a report on all of the technology that's happening for Mr. Brislin. Uh, some of the highlights were 90 new projectors installed. Now every single room has a projector. One new key fob access uh, for each building. That is a total of three in each school. Uh, Lincoln Middle School, each class has a new Dell computer. In the high school, 14 new Macs in the broadcasting room. All the course switches uh, in the buildings were updated. They're in the process of updating the IDF um, at the high school. Three image computers in the elementary school through Windows 10. Installed a new content filter from the district. Set up new Chromebooks in the high school and middle school. Installed 52 new cameras in the high school and middle school. Set up cafeteria computers at the elementary um, that are touch screen. Provided employee scan, uh, scanned by location for each building. Two Chromebooks in each office they sign in now with um, their ID card. Institute site called Clever, which is a single sign on for students that they just click on an icon to get in. Set up safe schools for staff to review um, new mandated training created a real-time user group. Right now there's 27 people in it. Created high school building um, use form for district internal requests. District staff IP cards will be used to access lunch, signing in, um, and that whole process. Uh, working with Hunter Technologies on school security app. Migrated all servers to the new data center network. Built new servers for all CAF services. Built SMTP relay server for service email handling district copiers, installed the temperature and room monitor for the server at the high school, upgraded network policy, access server over the bring your own device, built a new internal help desk system, rearranged high school computer lab at 116 in room 116, installed new battery backups for the IDF locations, it's in progress, installed a new VPC backup in the server room, also in progress, and those were many of the things that were discussed of what the technology department was doing uh, over the summer. And as Mr. Sprigo said before, with everybody, with buildings and grounds, all the people that were here in the summer, and Mr. Brislin and his staff and helpers in the summer, um, all of that was able uh, to get done. We also uh, discussed from uh, Mr. Strabona a review of the PD day on September 4th. Teachers are currently filling out the feedback. Uh, most of their feedback will be an extension of the October 8th PD day. Also, uh, Mr. Trevona has done something called Link Logic, which is pretty cool. Teachers in grades 6 through 12 were introduced to it. And basically, digitally, they can track all of the test scores of students and our own data that we put in and go back to three years of data. So she showed you compare seventh graders from last year to seventh graders previous years and uh, track all the data in real time. Also at CNI, uh, mental health and wellness update we got from Mr. Bona. Grades one, three, and six will work with Pandora, Jason, Pandora Healing and Jason Wood. There'll be an evening parent workshop with Jason Wood. There'll be a committee set up for teachers in each building uh, to work on a yoga comp and mindfulness connection, LLC and mindset LLC. And finally, uh, Mr. Bona shared with us an elementary school time allotment chart. Um, this was in response to um, how recess cannot count for PE. Time needed to be tweaked, so recess is not included in the 150 minutes of health of PE. Reallocated the time for handwriting, two periods of PA, PE, one period of health, and an additional health period was added to. That was in response to the state regulation that changed that you can't use recess time for physical education. And that's what was discussed at CNI. Thank you so much. Uh, before we go on to the next uh, community report, I just want to take a moment and, and acknowledge two, well, two different areas. First, uh, Mr. Brislin and his staff for being team, that's the guy behind the camera. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Can't say anything um, and, and the staff, of all the work they did over the summer, uh, Mr. Brislin, when, when we had a committee meeting, it was unbelievable how many projects they had going on. And 
want to say kudos to you guys. You did a great job. I also want to recognize Mr. Chamberlain, who's not here tonight, but also uh, Mr. Chamberlain and his staff and Luke Brown again took on a monumental effort of projects they had going on this summer, and they did a fantastic job. So kudos and thank you to all. Uh, so we're going to go to have some pack and PTOs and slip Thank you. Um, CPAC gave me a list of, of all their meetings coming up. I'm not going to read all those, but uh, the first one's coming up September 26th. It's going to be a meet and greet at 7 p.m. at the Lewis Bay Second Library. Um, they started rolling projects already. They're, they're continuing the Rock McDonald House pull tab uh, project. It's resuming. Bins will be at the, at the Lewis Bay Library, Andy's Corner, and at each of the public schools. Uh, they're asking that we continue to support the cause. We're very close to reaching a million tabs, which was the original goal. Uh, we think we're about 261 pounds away. The total estimate that we needed was 625 uh, pounds. So if you can continue to support the cause, we'd appreciate it. Uh, we also have, uh, they're planning two workshops, which we'll, we'll hear about more uh, as they're announced. Uh, some of their events that they're going to plan will be another Zumba event, which was great last year. Uh, they're doing an Angie's Art Box, uh, and hopefully two give back nights from the Buffalo Niner and Del Gallo. Again, they're going to be planning their uh, color run, which I think preliminary information was printed with the wrong date, May 6th, but it's going to actually be May 5th, 2019. Thank you. Uh, and that, and that event was, again, great the last couple years that they ran it. It's going to be rain or shine. Last year was rain, uh, so we know we can have a good time getting in the rain. Uh, again, we'll, we'll have some more updates as we move along with CPAC. And now uh, moving to HEF. Uh, HEF's first meeting is going to be September 25th, 730, right here in the uh, High School cafeteria. They already started their fundraising with the MacBook Pro uh, fundraiser. They're going to be at each one of the, um, the uh, back to school nights starting the raffles. The raffle will be held on October 23rd at the HEF monthly meeting. And that concludes my HEF and CPAC report. Yeah, family engagement meeting, we had a, a quick brief meeting tonight uh, to discuss, again, the uh, questionnaire that went out last year, or last school year. Uh, 231 participants uh, completed that report. We're now analyzing the data and moving forward. And we're putting up a brief, very brief statement that we're going to ask the uh, principals to read for us. Hopefully it's a you know, quick 30, 30 seconds, 60, uh, 60 second uh, spot just to explain what the Family Engagement Committee uh, is for and the impact that it could have by encouraging families to become more engaged um, and uh, just to encourage everybody to look for another Questionnaire will be working on in the future. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Legislator Sam. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the governor recently signed into law the following measures impacting school districts. Three point seat belts on school buses. A4110 slash S233 requires that all new school buses be equipped with three point lap and shoulder seat belts. This law applies only to new school buses and not, um, does not require us to retrofit any existing school buses. A542 slash S1830, the opioid overdose prevention, requires boards of education to develop a policy for the emergency administration of opioid evidence <coughs> to students and staff members. Such policy requires high school and permits any other school to maintain a supply of antidotes and permit emergency administration of an antidote by school nurse or trainee. And A764 slash S365 is school security panic alarms. It requires that all public elementary and secondary schools be equipped with a panic alarm for use in a school security emergency, such as a non-fire evacuation, lockdown, or active shooter situation. The panic alarm, which is to be inaudible within the school building, must be directly linked to law enforcement authorities and immediately transmit a signal or message to the authorities Thank you very much. Uh, 
uh, Save County School Board Association, Mr. Chair? Uh, I'm going to defer to Superintendent. I know there was a meeting of the uh, some State uh, County Superintendents last week brought to the PCTI as one of the Yes, so we, um, here's what I can share. We, uh, we've, we've met a few times uh, over the last, at the end of last year, uh, there was uh, a meeting uh, held uh, last, last week, I guess it was. Uh, there were only three superintendents in attendance, unfortunately, uh, I don't pretend. So uh, I will tell you that um, Mr. Uh, QB, president of the Pacific County Superintendent Association, did draft something to share with the newspaper. Uh, he shared it with all the superintendents. Uh, he's waiting for feedback from everyone, but there has been conversation about actually uh, uh, you know, encouraging the paper to write an article in regard to the challenges that we face of uh, Pacific County Tech. So uh, we are continuing to talk about it. Uh, we don't have another meeting scheduled right now, uh, but it is something that, that's been in, in, in a conversation and that we're waiting for feedback from everyone uh, you when know, we go on to the topic. The meeting's letter was very in depth. Yes. Uh, it's on the uh, I also forwarded a letter uh, to Mr. Sierra, which was a letter sent by Manchester Board President to PCTI and the free holders uh, relative to the extra state aid and the price of giving us relief. I was just wondering, Mr. President, is that done or are we going to do anything? It is completed and signed. I'll Good. give it to Mrs. Friedel today. Uh, it's exactly what was sent to the local Good. Okay. I don't recall saying a copy. It was the one I sent to. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is that, which is now on top of That's all it is. Gotcha, thank you. Oh, my God. Okay, anything else? All right, uh, public be heard. Um, on the contract, I just also want to thank the um, Finance Committee and Negotiating Committee because I know there's not everybody eligible on this committee to do so, and as a person who has served on the committee, it's a lot more hours than you think. And sometimes patients run the and I'm sure since we started the new year, we have an, an agreement. Everybody thinks it's easy to do, and everybody's just always on board with everything, but uh, it's not how it works. <laughs> so thank you, thank your families, because uh, I know not everybody's eligible, so that becomes a little bit of an issue because you're serving on multiple committees. So um, it's kind of good that we got that out of the way. But just a quick question on the ABA salary. I think you said ABA salary guidelines, so there's a differential. So is that just for? It, what what was discussed, I think this really would be able to pick it back Harry is doing, uh, taking data for, sure. you know, for ABA specifically, mm -hmm. not just if they're shadowing a child or something like that. When, they re when their workload requires a little bit more is where the, the differential is. Okay, so we probably change the like, position. It's like, it's like, it's oh, it's a statement. And it's only for contract matters. Oh, okay, so it's, it's not, only it's not like any Okay, I understand. Thank you. Um, do we have a copy, by the way, of the salary guide? Anybody who wants it? No. We don't have it here right now. Okay. Um, of the 21 new staff members, how many are new positions? Uh, the only one that's a new position is the math position of the Okay, so everything else is just a... Uh, behaviors, excuse me, the behaviors. So we have one new math in the high school and one new behaviors. So everything else is just it's retired or... And, and of all the added placements, are they new students? Or no, 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 no. These are, these are budget, all budget students. Oh, okay, okay. And CI-19, that's the Interagency Agreement for Special Ed Preschool Services? Yeah, that's the yes. cost for us for that. It basically helps us with the child find uh, obligation. Uh, 
education for students who are entering preschool or are maybe eligible for our preschool program, but there's no cost for us for that. It's really required.
Discussion? So Mr. Kubiha? Yes. Mr. Kubiha? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.